Welcome back everyone, I'm Zell, and today we're looking at the Wii Knife Company, Yusha. Alright guys, the Yusha. Oh my goodness, this is a knife that showed up at Blade Show last year. There were only two of them, both prototypes, and it was a knife that I just, I don't know, I, I had a thing for it. It's, it's just a super, super cool knife to me. And, you know, it's probably because the very first Wii knife I ever had was this model, the 617. And uh, the 617 and the Yusha are a whole lot alike. A whole lot alike. Now, we'll see some differences as we go along, but ergonomically, the two knives are fairly close. And the 617, ergonomically, is one of my favorite Wii knives. So, let's get a look at the Yusha itself. Uh, first off, guys, this is a big one. It's 4.81 inches closed, 0.6 thick, and a closed height of 1.36, and an overall length of probably have... Nope, we can barely get it on camera here. At 8.7, and a blade length of 3.93, an edge length of 3.48. And a blade stock thickness of 4 millimeters or 0.158. With a nice, fairly light weight of 4.39 for such a big knife. And a huge grip length of 4.2 inches. Pretty impressive there. Let's look at the construction. We have Wii's standard screws. We're not going to test them. We know how they work. They're just freaking awesome screws. And... What we essentially have, and people are going to argue with me about this, because you guys like to argue, it's just the way humans are, but this is a frame lock, in my opinion, with a carbon fiber overlay. And what do I mean by that? Well, we have a lock bar in here, and we have a lock bar insert. And you can see how it locks up down in there. Locks up quite nicely actually locks up a little further than what you can see because of the insert. And because of the way it works with these shadow box scales, uh, I consider it a frame lock with carbon fiber overlay. Now, we've got the nice Wii screws on this end of the knife. We pivot. Uh, got the Wii logo pivot on this side. Shadow box scale again. Again, we have very much the same backspacer that we had in the 617. Uh, in fact, nope, it is different. I started to say it might be a recycled part, but it is not. It is different. Got a little more jimping on it. A lot more jimping, actually. Uh, other than that, yeah, it's a, a redone piece in CAD to fit this knife. <coughs> and fits it quite well. So overall, uh, things to be aware of. This is a bit slick, but the knife locks you in so well, <clears throat> no matter where you get a hold of it, that uh, I have not found that to be a problem. Let's do a little bit of size comparison. <clears throat> now, before you guys start asking, this blue one with the black blade here is my personal Yucha, and no, you may not have it. There is a 617 and a buck 110. As we can see, this 617 is, well, the same size. Go figure, huh? The buck 110 is uh, only slightly smaller and a lot heavier. And we'll get some of it, one of its peers out here anyhow that I have available. There is a Leong Ma 15 or XV. Uh, something people are aware of there's a steel wheel intrigue the uh, larger model and we'll of course get our delica out and there you go it is a big not really a bruiser of a knife because it's pretty light but it's a big knife for sure and now let's get a look at the blade we've got that's why i've got all three of them out here because we've got two different blade styles this is the black and coated uh, blade and that black coating everyone's always worried about that black coating I can't find the 617 that I carry around all the time because I'm in the midst of moving everything around down here and up in the shop so 
I was going to show you guys that, and I apologize that I can't. But uh, that coating looks pretty much as new as it was the day I got the knife. So I have no fear of Wee's black coatings. And it is a very nice coating. Now, we do have this 3.93 inch blade with a 3.48 inch cutting length because of our uh, finger choil, sharpening choil. We'll talk about that in ergonomics again. And we have a compound flat grind on the harpoon shaped blade. Compound flat grind, yes, this is not a hollow grind in one spot and a flat grind in the other. This is two different flat grinds. And it works rather well. We have, if you look there at the edge, we have a continuous thickness of the edge. They've done a really good job of getting that together. And we have some thicker area back here to really bear down on things and thinner area up here to slice through things. Uh, is that really what was meant when the knife was designed? Uh, well, I kind of doubt it. I'm really believing that the knife was designed with the compound flat grind to allow for the wee bird eye. Uh, that's my guess. And, you know, it comes out to a very attractive blade that has proven to be very useful and the compound grind doesn't compromise what you're doing in the slightest or doesn't compromise what I'm doing in the slightest. So very well done there. And it is a blade of, see if you can read that there. Hard to see, I know. It's 35 VM. So let's do our pause and read card and then I'll be right back with you. All right, guys, mechanically, we have a Wii knife. And, you know, that's really all there is to say about it. I mean, we'll get, I said we wouldn't, but if I can find one here, we'll get a T8 out and we will uh, look at it. Is that a T8? Yep. And, you know, that's how tight the T8s are. It'll dang near hold the friggin' bit in the knife. Find your Wii Haw for you. There it is. Nice and tight. Uh -huh. Well done all the way around. You know how this goes with Wii. They know how to make some screws. And they do a good job of it. Uh, inside, ceramic ball bearing, ceramic detent. We've got a lock bar insert. Over travel stop uh, is provided. And I have not had one of these apart. And it appears... Nope, the over travel stop is provided by the scale. So... But over travel stop is there. Very, very nicely done. Very beautiful knives. It's reminiscent of the 704, one of the earlier models that was built in much the same way. Now, ergonomically, that was one of the things way back when, nearly two years ago, that attracted me to the 617. Put your hand around it and you are just in good shape for general cutting. Well, they didn't change anything. Very smartly, they did not goof anything up. If you have handled a 617, you have handled a Yusha. The big difference with this knife, of course, is the titanium, and this uh, carbon fiber is a bit slick, but again, if you've had a 617 in your hand, you know how well it fits in your hand and how well it stays. So. <laughs> the Yusha is going to do the same thing. I haven't had any problem with slick handles yet. Uh, would it have been nice if we had textured something? Well, yeah, of course it would, but... I mean, man, that looks so good. I don't know. <coughs> I'm, I'm kind of torn. I would kind of like texture on there, but I kind of like the way it looks. And uh, let's get a look at one more thing before we get it in the pocket. We looked at the black blade. Let's look at our stonewash blade. And this is Wee Stonewash. And ugh. They just do such a good job with the stonewash. That blade is such a beautiful thing. You know, and we'll get a look at the colors too. I need to run these things through for you. This is the gold and carbon fiber. Or bronze or whatever you'd like to call it. I'm not sure what they're calling it. 
I would call it gold, but I don't always see colors quite perfectly, so you guys tell me. And then this is our gray in carbon fiber. This is Brian spec, I would assume. Of course, we do have the uh, kind of gold looking screws there, so that might mess him up. But that's all right. And then this is the blue. And there you go. So to kind of gather all of this up, at a price tag of $253, I think the Yusha, my personally for me, I bought one, so it was a steal. Uh, however, you know, having the 617, I was a bit emotionally tied to the knife, I suppose, but I like it a lot. So what would Zell change? The only thing that I would change on this knife, well, I say only, there would be a couple of things. One, I don't really need the harpoon. In fact, there are some places where the harpoon is going to be a problem. So I would probably uh, get rid of the harpoon, even though I know many of you like it. The other thing I would do was is I would run that grind through that eye and make it a single nice flat grind if I were going to do it myself. However, one thing I did not mention is the jumping up here and the crowning of the blade. They have made this just beautiful. All those little details that you don't really think about until you go to set your finger somewhere on the knife or put your hand around it, and then you're like, oh my God, they thought about that. And uh, it's just an impressive thing. They even crowned out the har top of the harpoon just a little bit. That's a... Uh, wow. Pretty impressive, friends and neighbors. If you are interested in the Yusha at all, guys, uh, it's going to be one of my favorites. It's not without its things. You know, the, the compound grind, which if you're worried about the compound grind on sharpening, in this case, the compound grind is not going to cause you any sharpening issues for quite a long while. You know, at some point it might if you get your angles a little off and you may need to do some resetting of things. And as the bevels widen up, it may uh, give you some problems as you, you know, make the blade shorter. But overall, guys, the Yusha, in my opinion, is a very good buy, a very good construction method. I really like how we is using this shadow boxing that is reminiscent of what Hinderer does with uh, some of his knives. And it's just a beautiful thing. They started it, what, last year with the uh, 704, and now we're seeing it with the Yu Sha in production. And uh, what does Yu Sha mean, right? I've been saying that word and saying that word. Well, if you were in China, Yu Sha would mean harpoon, quite simply. You guys have a wonderful day. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.